We are back in the saddle again. Cue the Aerosmith. I don't think we can actually put that in the video. Um, Why not? I'm assuming Steven Tyler's got a, a, an expensive lawyer who's not afraid to to go after small fries like us. Yeah, but if you if you just point out to him that it's for Kansas basketball related content, let's be honest, Kansas basketball made Dream On. We know that. We all know that. <laughs> We you were nothing. That. You guys were nothing before Kansas started playing you at Allen Fieldhouse. Thank you. Yeah, that whole decade of the 70s. Who cares? This is Basketball Friends. He is Matt Tate. I am Nick Schwert. I would imagine the pregame video this year is going to be updated. Yeah. I don't know if you remember, but back in April, Kansas won the national championship and everybody yells every time Mario hits that shot. It's been like that, Matt. For 14 consecutive seasons, that has been the way that the Kansas pregame hype video has ended. They'll have new footage this year because Kansas hung another banner, which they unveiled on late night a couple of weeks ago. When you come back after winning a title, Bill Self keeps talking about turning the page. I don't ever want to turn the page, Matt. I want to bask in the glory. That's the beautiful thing about winning a national championship. You get to puff your chest out for a while and say, hey, guess what? We won the title last year. You didn't, nana nana boo boo. I just want to let them play with house money. You get a little bit of a cushion this year if you're the Hawks, right? I think so. I mean, look, it's 08 on one banner and it's 22 on the other. That's 14 years. There are kids entering high school that had to wait their whole lives to see that happen. And there and are guys on this bas on this Kansas basketball team who don't remember Kansas winning the last national oh, championship. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So I, I think, uh, yeah, I think self says it, right? It, that stuff doesn't fall off trees all the time and you enjoy it for as long as you can. I also think that's why he's saying, turn the page, turn the page, turn the page, turn the page, because he's telling himself to turn the page because he is enjoying the afterglow of that title still himself. I understand it. I do think they need to turn the page and it's not just because, hey, you got to get over it. Let it go. It doesn't matter anymore. It always will matter. It will matter 100 years from now when people are still filling the field house. What this team wants to do is go hang another banner, make a run at another title. And they're hungry to do that. They've got the personnel to do that. And they've got enough leaders that have been a part of last year's team to maybe make a run at it. So it makes sense. Lock in, turn the page, go ahead. And if you have to tell yourself that every day, then do it. Ochai and CB were the leaders of that team a year ago. Jalen and Dewan who are the only two returning starters, they are being thrust into roles that they haven't necessarily filled before. They are the guys leading this team because it's them and a bunch of dudes who either weren't on this team or who were role players a year ago. What do you think this team looks like with those two guys now becoming sort of the faces of the program? Yeah, I think it's a perfect thing. I, I think these two are, are ready for the moment. I think they're uh, complementary leaders. I think they can really help each other. Uh, they're almost like a good cop duo, right? Like one's the high intensity guy that slides over the hood and jumps in through the window and the <laughs> other's the guy that just holds it down and does all the paperwork. Uh, you can, you can yeah, figure out which one it. is switch, right? Yeah. But that's an important part of this thing. They both have the same mindset of, of Kansas basketball is bigger than us, bigger than the team, bigger than the coaches, bigger than the players. They want to show, hey, I watched Ochai do this, this, and this, and he was one of the best players ever here, and he put that banner up there. So let's do that. And I'm going to show you how, and then you follow me and so on and so on. And so I think they're, uh, they're having been there before will be a, an important part of it. On top of that though, I think they'll hold each other accountable. And I think that's a really important part because there's going to be a lot of opportunity and a lot of moments where it's on their shoulders and they're going to help each other, support each other, and also hold each other to the standard that is Kansas basketball. Leadership, I feel like from the outside, we kind of overblow it. Not that it's not important, but just that we have no way of actually judging it. Frank Mason's one of the best leaders I've ever seen. He didn't win a national championship. Right. Going into March last year, I wouldn't have told you these are the best leaders in the history of Kansas basketball, but they got a banner out of it. I think more than anything, it's like they were a damn good team who got hot at the right time. We'll see how good this team is. From a basketball point of view, though, they weren't Ochai, CB, Dave. They took secondary roles, specifically Jalen, who's had a very interesting journey at Kansas where he gets injured, comes back, kind of came on out of nowhere and was this really nice surprise. Last year, sat out to start the year, comes in, didn't play well, becomes a starter, all of a sudden hits the ground running, huge piece in the title run. What do you think he specifically looks like as the guy who this offense runs through this year? 
I think he's waited a long time for this moment. And I think he's learned and watched and absorbed and, and taken in how to handle it and what to do with it. And I think he's freaking ready. In a lot of ways, I think he was born for this type of role. His head's in the right space. I think his his words are in the right space. He's saying all the right things. It is still very much team, team, team. But he relishes the idea that he's kind of the face of this team. And so I think that's set him up for a monster season and, and production and all those things. And look, you didn't have to look farther than late night to figure that out, right? The, it's a stupid scrimmage that means nothing and self doesn't even want to watch it. But here you go. The game's on the line. They give it to Jalen. He dribbles it out clears out and takes the shot that wins the game i mean that tells you even though it's a worthless throwaway scrimmage that tells you that that he understands it and he's ready for it is he going to be the alpha you talked about team 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 we say that every single year rare is it a year like last year or with frank or with thomas robinson where you have a guy who's averaging 20 points per game do you think this is the year they kind of get back to more of what we're used to seeing under self yeah, I think probably. I mean, because I think you've got guys like Dewan who can score and lead you any given day, um, and they want him to be more aggressive and more of a scorer, and he understands that. I think you've got a guy like Kevin McCuller who has great chemistry with Jalen and is also a do-it-all kind of player. You can run your offense through Kevin McCuller, and he can take four shots. And I think in that way, with those two guys sort of helping him carry that burden, I think Jalen will still be able to do what he did a lot of last year. It's just going to be, does he knock down the big shot? Does he get to the free throw line? Does he attack the paint when they need him to, which is what Ochai did, which is what CB did, all those things, right? And so he'll have to step up and step into those roles. But I think those two other guys will make it a lot easier for him to not feel like he has to do that for 40 minutes a game or something crazy. What do you think this front court looks like? No more Dave, no more Mitch, all those jokes can die. You've got a couple of guys. They won't. They no, won't. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, the, the Perry Ellis jokes are still going. You've got two guys in KJ and Zach Clements who played bench roles, played spot minutes, but ultimately were secondary players who are now maybe given the opportunity for increased roles. Cam Martin's still there. He redshirted last year. You got a couple freshmen in Edgefer and Uday. How does this front court shake out? I think if KJ Adams were three inches taller, it wouldn't even be a conversation. I think he'd be the guy. He's a stud. He's physical. He's. Is he's there anything seller. we can do about that then? Probably. They have those lifts, right? You can put those in, in your I think in Russia, shoes. they do some like weird experimental surgeries where they put steel beams in your legs. So maybe that's something worth exploring. Probably no time for that one, but, but, you know, we can figure it out, but, but, you know, he'll play the five some right all summer, all off season selfs like, nah, we want to play him probably on the wing more. And here he is saying the other day, well, we're going to play him at the five some. So, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. I think there's enough guys there. Self said he'd rather have one of them play 25 and, and the other play 15 and, and have two guys happy rather than four guys playing 10 minutes and four guys upset. And Zach Clements has a chance, right? I mean, th there's a reason that that guy played some last year and, and had huge expectations thrown on his shoulders coming into this year. Maybe he's a gamer enough that when it's go time, he's ready. And maybe Ernest Uday is your guy and you figure that out January 7th or whatever it is. Either way, they have enough at the position that they can go ahead and do what they need to do and let it play out. The opportunity for really big things is there for one of those guys. Go get it. That's what David McCormick did. It wasn't that David McCormick was the guy that self wanted to play through every single minute of every single game. He just trusted him. He knew, hey, look, this guy's going to give me everything I, he's got. He's going to he's going to play hard. He's going to play physical and he's going to play to his size. And he wasn't always perfect. But when it counted, he was pretty good. I hope all these guys understand that it's a rite of passage as a Kansas big man for fans to call for you to be benched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to hate you for sure. Yeah, it just happens. It happens. It's uh, it's a rite of passage. I mean, no player so quickly went from get him off the court to get him in the rafters quicker than David McCormick did over about a two-week <laughs> span. Yeah, yeah. How about that? I mean, they couldn't see enough of McCormick in some other time zone get him out of here get him out of here and then oh by the way he hits some big shots and plays great down the stretch and now he's a legend uh, you know good for him it's pretty great and and again it's all because the way he carried himself he played hard he never let the outside noise bother him mm -hmm. he just kept with it and these guys uh, enough of them saw that you know to, to understand okay that's how you handle yourself and that's what coach self wants so i'm gonna go do that if they can follow in those footsteps they'll be fine you're bringing up a lot of a lot of good memories, man. And I know I don't like a lot of KU fans. I don't want to close my eyes because I don't want to fall asleep. 
Because if I did, I'd just miss you, Dave. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to miss a thing. You just don't. <laughs>